In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through all the speedrunning strategy changes you need to know about since GTA's Tunis DLC at the end of July 2021, in order for you to complete the Kaoprico heist in just 30 minutes. This is an update video from my previous speedrun guide back in March 21, which at the time of making this video has almost 800,000 views and over a 98% like ratio. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I urge you to watch it first before checking this one out. I will leave a link in the description. So without further ado, let's get to it. The Gather Intel missions are exactly the same. You'll either get Procopio Beach, Palato Bay, one of two locations at Grapeseed, or the speedrunner's wet dream, Lego Zancudo. I purposely left off the way to get the Oppressor Mark II on the island in my last video, confident that it would be patched, which it has now been. Why can't you assholes be on time for once, eh? Arms out, let's go. Once you arrive on the island, the bike will spawn in exactly the same place. You must be careful. If guards get a good look at you while you are in the restricted area, they will know something is not right. The first difference here since the update is the installation of a security camera right on the route we used to take. Going through this camera will mean you getting spotted straight away. You now need to make a slight detour. You need to drop down to the right and through this little field to go around the camera. A very minor time loss, just be careful of the killer bushes and trees. If you're planning on going for the Elite Challenge solo, you may want to consider parachuting down from the tower and scoping the secondaries at the main dock. The strats for scoping out and finding a new session stay exactly the same. You can still launch guided missiles from your Kasatka to blow up the dreaded Valkyrie during the weapon's loadout prep. And if you get it more than once, Switching launch seats each time will save you having to wait for any cooldowns. When you get a good mission at a CEO office, instead of getting in your sparrow, landing it and then calling the Neopressor Mark II, just leave through the hatch, kill yourself and you'll spawn on Elysian Island. We can then call in your oppressor, saving you about 30 seconds. It is land of paperwork, receipt, registration, serial number, and for this operation, all unacceptable. We must be clean, and the closest thing to clean in Los Santos, stealing from your rivals. Taking out the guards in the office is still the same as before. The guns we are looking for will be in a special shipping. Try looking for gun locker, wall safe, something like this. One minor change is how you call in the Kasatka, which is actually now better. Instead of fiddling in the menu to put it away and then calling it in again, much like you would with the standard vehicles, you now just need to press one button to call it in, which will arrive at the nearest location to you. As always, make sure you do these in an invite-only lobby, as having anyone near your oppressor when you land it on the sub will cause it to fall off and be destroyed. Now 
No changes to the plasma cutter prep. Take a photo from the door and send it to Pavel. Perhaps they have started the job sooner than anticipated. Look around. Then just blow everyone up to collect the goods. This time there was shooting, yes? But this is good news. Means you have the cutter. One minor change you may want to consider is during the fingerprint cloner mission, where you can chuck a sticky bomb here, high to the right, and blow everyone up. However, this does leave fire everywhere, putting you at risk of burning to death. You can do this with an RPG, but you may get mixed results. I suggest sticking to the assault shotgun and killing them that way. When going inside to get the fingerprint cloner, first person will give you a tiny time save. When grabbing the fingerprint cloner, the hitbox for collection is a lot bigger now. Do you have it? I suggest you leave fast. Cutting torch is still the same, but I had many comments saying that getting the hard hat first to do it sneaky is much better. However, it will depend on RNG and what location. This one here doesn't give room for manoeuvre, meaning it's easy to alert the guards, so it's still better to not take any risks and blow everyone up. You have come here only to taste your own testicles. So, I deduce from the sound of gunfire that you have not gone for this healthy approach. So, avoiding these guards will be good practice for Mr. Rubio's island, yes? Do you have it? Bring it back for safekeeping. If you have bearer bonds as your primary target and need to do the safe code prep, there is a major difference here. As we say in Russia, there are many ways to break the egg. Now when you kill the chubby cowboy and collect the codes, you will immediately spawn outside of the casino and complete the mission. Whereas before, you would need to kill yourself and then spawn near the server farm news facility. As before, leave the mission till last, so you can now find a new lobby to spawn in your Kasatka and be ready to start the finale. Another point of contention is the long thing versus the Kasatka. There is not a single finale world record or quality finale that uses the Kasaka approach. Not one. Let's compare the preps first. The long fin prep is always straightforward. Go to the location, get your phantom wedge, Collect the trailer. Deliver it and maybe kill yourself to lose the cops. Call in your Mark II and head back to the Kasatka. Or alternatively, call up one before you start the mission to request a job. Hey, what do you want? Then if you still have the cops, accept the job. Then back out. And you'll be right next to your Phantom Wedge in no time. Long fin delivered. 
The long fin approach is very consistent and completed in about 4 minutes to 4 minutes 30. The cassette cut is nowhere near as consistent and will only be slightly faster if you have the close location for the sonar jammer, which you can do in about 4 minutes. Having a further location in a Kasatka could add another minute or so. You might also have your Kasatka magically appear on the surface, like this. Putting you in all sorts of danger where you will end up dying over and over and over and over again. Or even better, this might happen. If you wish to use submarine to get to Mr. Rubio's island undetected, we will need to deflect their sonar. When we compare finales, it takes about two minutes to be in the compound using a Kasatka approach. but takes only 1 minute 40 with a decent boat jump. Or rolling 1 minute 25 if you use the sticky bomb approach. You also spawn inside the compound in a better location to grab the gate keys. Now we go downstairs and see what Mr. Rubio has for us this time. And yes, the long fin is still exactly the same. It's not slower, nor are there invisible walls put up that were not there before, despite what some people may tell you. He does not appreciate a Russian military strategy. Everything else in the compound is pretty much the same, with the same four guards dropping the gate keys. The only difference I've noticed is the camera sometimes gets alerted much faster than previously, so be aware. As for weapons, unless you're specifically going for the sticky bomb approach, which by the way will only work on normal mode, always, always, always choose the aggressor loadout for the assault shotgun. It can still do headshots from a fair distance, but more importantly, take out two guards together much more efficiently due to its power. Other loadouts, like the Conspirator, are a much less safe choice, and may cause the guards to be alerted. If you're not too fussed on getting the Elite Challenge, and you've gone in sneaky, you can chuck a sticky at the gate and blow it up, saving precious seconds, but this will mean alerting the guards. And as many of you have asked, unless you have two paintings in the office, only ever go to the main docks for your secondaries. It's really not worth the time spent going elsewhere just for a couple of thousand extra if you don't get a decent coke spawn. If you do want these solo elite, go to the main docks first so you can still escape quickly doing the cliff jump. The solo door glitch, which people are using to get gold, is now patched. But you can still open the doors on your own with both key cards collected if you're doing it with two or more players, which for anyone not doing solo runs is much faster. You must enter them at the same time. Upon escape, the same quick exit checkpoint still exists. The coordinates for your extraction point at the airstrip should be with you now. The water is full of attack boats, you will need to be careful.
If you haven't already, please do check out my extensive and thorough Keio Perico speedrun guide, which explains everything else you need to know in much more detail. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for you. And there you have it. Did I miss anything? Then let me know in the comments. So if you like this video, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beatsdown and I'll see you in the next one.